<laughs> Sorry about that. Hello, true scarers. I thought we would mix it up a little bit and we'll talk about a ghostly place. Why did I sound like Trump and why did I call it like that? I haven't done a spooky type video in quite some time. So let's talk about one of the most haunted locations in the country and some say the world. So this is the history of the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Viewer discretion doesn't really need to be advised on this one, but it's advice. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I love all things ghosts and haunted places. When I lived in Southern California, which is where I was born and raised, uh, I had frequently gone to the Whaley House in San Diego, Old Town, uh, which is considered one of the most haunted places in the country. I also would frequent the Queen Mary. I love to uh, explore those types of places, and I also love to learn about their history. And, and Waverly Hill Sanatorium, which is located in Louisville, Kentucky, which is now, it's completely abandoned at this point, it is definitely one of the most infamous or famous uh, haunted locations that you probably have seen a lot about. So the exact spot where Waverly Hill Sanatorium is was originally purchased way back in 1883 when I was in my second try of my senior year in high school. I was not very smart. And it was bought by a man named Major Thomas Hayes. Initially, he built his family home on this land, but when he realized that there were no nearby schools, he would turn it into a school. It was just a one-room schoolhouse primarily for Mr. Hayes' children. The teacher that he hired to teach there, uh, she named it the Waverly School, and that's because she was a fan of, I guess, a series of novels, the Waverly novels. Now, towards the beginning of the 20th century, Louisville, Kentucky especially, was ravaged by this new tuberculosis outbreak. It became kind of like one of the epicenters of the tuberculosis outbreak, and a lot of deaths that were coming from it, from that illness, were coming from that area. In order to treat tuberculosis, at least back then at that time, they wanted to have a place that was not really close to many other places to prevent this you know, illness from spreading. They needed a, a proper location in order to try to contain this disease. And eventually they found this Waverly School and because of its high airflow, and it's just, it was just like the perfect spot for a tuberculosis like hospital. So a board of tuberculosis hospital was founded in 1906. They then purchased the property from Mr. Hayes. And by 1908, they would break ground on constructing a larger hospital on these grounds. They actually just thought the name Waverly, because the name of the school was Waverly School, they just thought that sounded like a really peaceful kind of name, and so they kept it. So they would name it the Waverly Sanatorium. So over that first year or two, they constructed a two-story administration building, and then they would do these two open-air pavilion-type buildings on each side of the administration building. It was small back then, and so they really could only hold roughly 40-ish patients at this hospital. So the sanatorium, which was going to be there for treating tuberculosis, was officially opened in 1910. But almost immediately, the capacity was filled up of the hospital, because like I said, they were only able to do about 40 total patients. So by March of 1924, they realized because this tuberculosis outbreak was just getting larger and larger, they decided to make the building larger and larger. And so they did. They then constructed new portions of the building, which can now house up to 400 patients. And by 1926, they were finally kind of reopened for those 400 patients. They would nickname the epidemic of tuberculosis the White Plague, and it just continued to get worse and worse because for a very long time there was no cure for this. And they were still trying to figure out all aspects of this illness. Eventually what the hospital became was not really a place to cure these patients because there was no cure. 
it really was just about treating them to make them comfortable, as comfortable as you can make people in that situation, and to kind of make their eventual probable, not not everyone died from it, but their probable death, at least they could at least try to make it peaceful for them. The hospital continued to expand. It would have like laundry service services. It had laboratories. It had basically every patient had their own room. They didn't really do communal rooms. And they really tried to paint it as kind of kind of like this, uh, everything sunshine and butterflies here. You know, everything is like, they wanted to make it look like a happy place and not a place of death. They would have like their own farms on this property and they would have everyone you know, out there do farming and they're growing their own food. The place essentially ended up having its own zip code. <laughs> they would raise their own animals essentially for slaughter to get meat. Meanwhile, the hospital staff there is trying to treat their patients and trying to, not only are they treating them with the known treatments that were more uh, commonly practiced, but they were also doing things that weren't commonly practiced there. They would do something called artificial pneumothorax. I'm not sure if I said that right, which basically was they would blow air into either the lung itself or the cavity between lungs in order to artificially collapse the diseased portion of the lung, allowing it to rest and theoretically allowing the lesions caused by the tumor tuberculosis to heal. This was something that patients were not likely to survive and it could be incredibly uncomfortable for them. They also did something there where for the treatment of tuberculosis was something that they would do to remove multiple ribs with the intention of collapsing the lung. And while doctors prefer to only remove two or three ribs at a time, most patients required as many as eight removed for this technique to become effective, meaning they had to endure multiple painful surgeries. Now, you will hear stories about how 60,000, 70,000 people died over the course of time at Waverly Hills, but there really is, that's more of like an exaggerated number, uh, grossly exaggerated, because the more realistic number, and no one really knows, I don't think there's truly an actual detailed list of every single person who died there, but the more realistic number is somewhere between eight to 10,000 people. In 1945, a 150 plus people died there at the hospital, which was one of their highest uh, death count years. But there was constantly just dead bodies uh, piling up where people would be dying there virtually every single day. And because they were trying to do this, everything is nice, sunshine and butterflies, they would not want to just wheel out corpses in front of the other patients to say, hey, this is what's gonna happen to you. So they, they had this, what they would now call the body chute, uh, had installed there. It was a secret tunnel that patients weren't aware of, where the hospital staff would wheel the dead bodies down. And so it goes down at this really steep angle, and then it opens up towards uh, the, the ground, where it would be, I guess, really close to the train tracks. And so they would wheel the dead bodies down the body chute, uh, bring them outside and load them up on the trains. And then the bodies would be taken away by train. By 1943, there was a breakthrough with uh, tuberculosis treatments. They found an antibiotic that would help treat this illness. That was in 1943, but that treatment did not make its way to Waverly until about 1949. So there was that large period of time where there was a cure, there was something that can make these people better, but for whatever reason, it just didn't make its way there. And so people died at the hospital that may not have needed to die. But eventually by 1949, it did make its way finally to Waverly. And so over the next few years, the population of Waverly began to decrease because these patients were no longer being sent to Waverly, they were being sent to traditional hospitals and given this new antibiotic. And by 1962, uh, Waverly would basically no longer be a tuberculosis hospital. And then at that point, by 1962, they saw its last patient leave and it became a ghost town. And then about a year or so later, it reopened as the Woodhaven Geriatric Center. It was a nursing center for elderly people with dementia, stuff like that. That only lasted until about 1982 because then the state of Kentucky would shut it down 
once they found out that there was some serious abuse going on there at the geriatric center. There was patients being neglected, and so eventually when it closed, they took all of the existing patients and moved them to new centers. Sometime after that, the land was sold with the intention of turning that land into a prison, but they received a lot of backlash about that, and so it never really came to. Then they said, okay, we'll turn it into apartments, but then that plan failed. Then in 1996, it was bought by another group or individual, and their plan was to install the world's tallest Jesus statue uh, there, which they wanted it to be just like the Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio. But then the costs of doing that amongst turning the hospital portion into these like worship centers, it was going to be like millions and millions of dollars. And so that never happened. So tuberculosis Jesus never came to be. By 2001, the building and everything around it, the land around it was sold. And the people who bought it, they started the Waverly Hills Historical Society. And their goal was to raise money to refurbish the building. And ever since then, in order to raise money, uh, I guess to put into this, they would do things like they would host uh, haunted tours of the building. They would do these haunted house events every Halloween. And the whole concept of this being a haunted building really kind of kicked into high gear at that point. Waverly Hills Sanatorium would be featured on shows like Ghost Hunters. It would, I remember the episode because I used to love watching that show. Uh, it was also featured on Ghost Adventures with the incredibly annoying Zach Baggins. <laughs> and the, uh, listen, this also depends on if you believe in ghosts or not, I do. And so you did have, it may not have been 60 or 70,000 people who died there, but there were thousands of people who did still die there. They died in incredibly uncomfortable ways. Some of them were getting some very extreme medical treatments that may have been painful. Their deaths were slow, agonizing. They're coughing up, throwing up blood. It was a nightmare for these people before they died. And the building really is, it's, it's abandoned at this point. I mean, this whole idea of, I guess, refurbishing the interior of the building, it doesn't really sound like it ever came to because the building is still, it's, it's just gone. I mean, it's there obviously, but like the interior of the building is just completely overrun. Everything is just falling apart. And it does create a very creepy, dark, atmospheric type environment. It's very unsettling. People have walked the halls of the sanatorium at night and they say they can hear the sounds of patients screaming. They hear people talking. They hear crying. The distant sounds of, of, of footsteps, of gurneys being pushed. And a lot of that activity also seems to happen in the body shoot area, which now is incredibly disturbing and dark and, and freaky. There have been reports of a woman being seen there whose wrists are cut and there's blood coming out of her wrists. There is sightings of a ghostly hearse uh, being found near the end of the body shoot. There are uh, sightings of a man wearing a white coat, maybe like a lab coat or possibly one of the chefs who worked in the kitchens there. People will smell the, the smells of cooking food in this abandoned kitchen. The fifth floor of Waverly Hills is said to be the most haunted uh, location in the entire building. Now, the, room, the story goes is that the fifth floor was used for mental patients, like it was like a, a mental institution up there. But the reality is, is that's not actually what it was used for. But it, it appears to be like the, the hotbed of the entire building. People see uh, the shapes of full body apparitions moving past windows in the fifth floor. People see shadows everywhere. They hear uh, creaking floors, they hear footsteps. Some have claimed they've heard voices telling them to jump off the building. There is also a story uh, that in 1928, a nurse who was working there hung herself in room number 502. And there is a very famous photo um, of a hallway on the fifth floor where there is a very clear image of a woman who appears to be kind of see-through standing in a doorway and it's a relatively older photo and it does look pretty legit i don't know if anyone's ever actually discredited this photo or not but if it hasn't been discredited it's just even if it's not real real it's still just a creepy photo if it's a fake it's a really well-made fake and it's just 
It's unsettling. They say this nurse was named Mary Lee, but uh, people have gone through the archives and through the records, and s there's no official on record story of a nurse named Mary Lee killing herself by hanging herself in room 502. But it doesn't mean it didn't happen. And it's just people have gone into that room and they have felt like this feeling, almost like a pressure around their necks. And some people say they have gotten this sudden compulsion to jump out the window from that room. There is also uh, another ghost who appears to roam the grounds of Waverly Hills, and it's the ghost of a little boy they've called Timmy. Timmy has been seen and heard roaming the halls of the building. People have heard his footsteps, people have heard his giggling, his little child laughter. And there's become this popular thing now where Timmy loves to play with like a bouncy ball. And so people would bring some kind of bouncing ball with them while they're hunting ghosts here. And there have been reports of the person pushing the ball and then something pushing the ball back. Or they'll leave the ball kind of in the hallway and it just begins to roll on its own. Some people have claimed they have seen the ball literally levitating and moving on its own as if someone picked it up and began to walk with it. So I guess the story is, is that this little boy, Timmy, was at the hospital and he was playing with the ball when something happened, an accident happened and he died. And that's one of the reasons why this you know, ball plays such a big part in this particular sighting of this particular ghost. There have also been sightings of an elderly woman who seems to have some kind of chains around her hands and she's constantly howling that if someone got too close to this apparition, the howling would get louder. There's also another ghost there that they have nicknamed the Creeper. Apparently this one will creep and crawl around the floors, but also on the walls. Some people have seen it creeping along the ceiling, which that's not something I want to see in real life. No, thanks. So along with that photo of that supposed alleged nurse who killed herself, there's another photo that was taken in modern times where there was these two women who were in the uh, building. They were on a tour. They took a photo and they did not realize until after the photo, they looked at it later, that there was someone behind them. There is an image clearly of another, what appears to be a woman standing right behind them. Uh, and they both said this person was definitely not with them. There was no one behind them because there was basically just a wall there and they don't know who that woman is. That's all allegedly, of course, uh, these things can be you know, faked, but it is still an unsettling image. There have also been a series of videos captured there of ghosts and I'm gonna play some of them for you. So the first one comes from a YouTube channel named Eric Glosser. And this one just shows a shadow person basically walking. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, is it? Uh, <laughs> who knows? But still, if it is, then that's creepy. The second video is from a YouTube channel called Haunted or Not. This one is a thermal imaging camera. So the figures at the beginning are the actual people who are walking through the hallway, like people who were there on a tour and they were like, you know, hunting ghosts. But then at one point the camera, you see a cut in the timestamps and that's because all of those people had gone. They're like, they're in a different part of the building. And within about 30 seconds, you see these two much smaller thermal images of what looks like two people walking uh, in this hallway and they're very short. So it looks at, as if they may be children, but there were no children with this group. The third video is also from the YouTuber Eric Glosser. So this one shows what they describe as an imp darting across the hallway. Uh, and so they also, you'll see it being shown back in slow motion. And then a little while later, that same imp 
I don't know. That's what they called it. Um, but then it darts back the other direction. And then once again, you'll see it in slow motion. I don't know. To me, it just looks like a bug, maybe a, a bird or a bat. I don't know if bats are common in there. I'm sure birds can get in there because the windows are all broken. So I don't know. It's just what it looks like to me, but could be some kind of, could be that creeper, that creeper ghost. The fourth one comes from the Travel Channel. And this was actually one of those where Ozzy Osbourne and Sharon Osbourne were like watching this stuff and then like reacting to it. But this one just shows clearly a full body apparition walking across the room. The fifth video is from the old reality show, Ghost Hunters. Is that show even still on? I don't even know. It's been so long since I've seen it. But this is like OG Ghost Hunters, like back in the original days. They were also using a thermal camera and they catch what definitely appears to be a small figure walking from one side of a hallway to the other. There's a lot of ghosts who just walk hallways here. I always thought it looked very legit, but there's just really no way of knowing if there was like a person there, like an actual person or like a crew member. Did you see that? Oh yeah, that's weird when you do a slow mo. Look at that, look boom. Oh, that's trippy. The sixth video is from a YouTube page called Scream Paranormal. And this one, you just see a figure walking across the hallway. These ghosts have really nothing better to, to do than just to go back and forth in the hallway. The uh, seventh video is from Spooky Basement YouTube page. So they go into a room and they're just sort of casually going into this room. The door, they're opening the door, makes a funny squeaking sound. The cameraman then peeks his, the camera into the room where they're opening the door and there's this hole in the wall. After they rewatch their footage, they looked at it and they noticed that something was poking out of that hole and then darts away really quick. So. Is it a ghost or is it a critter? Who knows? It's unsettling either way. The eighth video is from Resonance Paranormal, their uh, YouTube page. So the video shows one of the group's leaders answering questions during a public ghost hunt. If you look in the background, it's kind of hard to miss, but if you look in the background, you can clearly see someone peeking from behind a door. They later said that they were positive that this was not anyone from their show or their staff. This was not anyone from their group. All of the people who were on this tour were there and accounted for. And so they said, that is not any of us. It's a very obvious, very clear image of someone going like, just like, oh, hey, can't be here. Sorry. Uh, so I don't know. It definitely looks real. Uh, but in terms of if it's a ghost, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, so Waverly Hill Sanatorium is definitely a very, it has a very, it's a very tragic history, a sad history, just because of all the death that happened there. Thousands of people dying in agony, suffering and pain. Yeah, I mean, at times, if you, again, if you believe in this stuff, that stuff really does kind of stay. It sticks. It just sort of lingers there. 
and it, if if anything else, it really just sort of weighs this very foreboding weight upon you if you go into a place like that. I've never been there personally myself. I would love to walk through it one day, but I've been to places that are haunted where they've had these like tragic histories, and you kind of do feel like that weight kind of put on your chest almost when you're in these locations where like I remember I felt it in being in the boiler room area of the Queen Mary there's just like the sudden like I can't really explain it but I know the feeling but tragedy can just stay and linger in this in one location and even if you don't believe in ghosts you can still believe in that that residual energy just being there and you also have your minds like ugh, there's so much horrible stuff happened here so many people died in this one place this one place thousands of people died and all these years later you go through that and you're thinking about that and then you're just feeling those feelings and it's unsettling either way whether you believe in ghosts or not it's just unsettling and it's disturbing but what about you guys would you ever roam the halls of the waverly hill sanatorium at night would you stay there overnight would you let someone lock you in or would you rather wait for daytime and just sort of look at look at it from afar and say, hey, how you doing, Waverly? I'm not going to go in yet. That sounded weird. I'm not going to go inside yet. That was weirder. I'm just going to stay outside. Me personally, I'll say it now because I'm many states away from it, but I'd be like, yeah, absolutely, I'd go in there. But I think if I ever were to like go there and then just see that building, that gigantic just eerie abandoned building i might change my tune <laughs> i might go mm, maybe not for me sorry i'll just say hey how you doing take a picture from afar and say oh, we're good who takes pictures like this anymore mike it's all with our cell phones just this stop that but yeah would you go there would you explore would you be afraid would it scurry you it would scur me probably well, maybe one day you'll find yourself in Louisville, Kentucky, and you will find yourself roaming the halls of the Waverly Hill Sanatorium. And maybe, just maybe, <laughs> you'll see a ghost just casually walking across the hallway, like you do. But, hey, that's it for this. That's it for this video. So, um, hi, if you're new here, uh, my name is Mike. I typically tell true crime stories, but it's been weighing a little heavily on the brain lately. So I'm um, just sort of taking a little bit of a break and doing something different uh, for now. Uh, but I, yeah, normally I'm, I do tell true crime stories virtually every day here or over on TikTok. I have a couple pages, so you can follow those if you want. The uh, TikTok links will pop up in this corner at the beginning of this video and also at the end and also you'll see it in the link tree. I don't know why I forgot all of a sudden, but you'll see it in the link tree in the description of this video below. And also in that link tree, I have like my merch store. We have t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that. Uh, we do ship all over the world, so check it out if you want to. And then if you want to recommend a true crime case to me, by all means do so. You can email me. My email is listed below as well. Just send me the name of the case, where it happened and when it happened. I'll add it to my list and eventually I will uh, cover that case. I can't promise you when though because I pick things at random. If you want to recommend a spooky place like a haunted location or something like that, you can recommend that to me too. I'll add it to my list. So yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, we, well, we will see, see you later. Okay. Okay. You could be good. You behave. Be on your best. Um, Attitude, behavior. Mm-hmm. <laughs>